A muscle twitch is a single brief contraction in response to a muscle being stimulated. The minimum voltage needed to stimulate that muscle to contract is the threshold. If the voltage is not enough to stimulate contraction, we call that a sub-threshold stimulus. Now there are three phases to a muscle twitch or contraction, and that is the latent period or lag period that occurs after the stimulus has hit the muscle cell, but before the contraction begins. Now there's no contraction during that, that time, so there's no change in the muscle fiber length. And the reason we have that delay or that lag is it's the time that's necessary for excitation contraction to happen. So the calcium has to be released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. It has to bind to the troponin, and the whole troponin and tropomyosin and actin and myosin thing has to happen, right? So it takes a minute for that to happen. That's your latent or lag period, okay? The contraction period begins with the repetitive power strokes of the myosin head pulling on the actin filaments, and that shortens the sarcomeres. So muscle tension increases during muscle contraction. And that's followed by the relaxation period, which begins with the breaking of the cross bridges as calcium gets pumped back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum, the muscle tension decreases, and relaxation occurs. On that previous slide, I mentioned the term muscle tension. That simply refers to the force that's generated when that muscle gets stimulated to contract. So let's talk a little bit about that muscle contraction and motor unit recruitment. Remember, a motor unit is a single motor neuron and all of the muscle fibers that it stimulates. So when we are applying a stimulus to a muscle cell, that stimulus is either going to be threshold and cause a contraction or subthreshold and not be enough to cause a contraction. Because motor units vary in their sensitivity to sense stimulation, each increase in voltage applied to a muscle causes a greater number of motor units to contract. So the tension generated with each muscle contraction increases until the point we call maximum contraction is reached when all the motor units have been stimulated. This increase in the tension that occurs with an increase in the stimulus intensity is called recruitment or multiple motor unit summation. So if you look at this graphic right at the top, so as voltage increases, that's your stimulus, we are recruiting a few more motor units within a muscle to contract. And when we reach maximum contraction, we have recruited all of the motor units. So you can see over here, no stimulus, no motor units causing contraction, just a few. And then as the voltage increases, more motor units will be recruited. So recruitment helps to explain how our muscles can exhibit what we call the all or none law, but also varying degrees of force. So all or none simply means that if a skeletal muscle fiber is going to contract in response to a stimulus, it will contract completely. That's the all. And if the stimulus is sub-threshold, the muscle will not contract. That's the none. So each time a skeletal muscle contracts, it contracts maximally or not at all. Now the difference in the force and precision of the contraction varies because of the changing number of motor units that are activated. So if you have a small number of motor units activated, there's fewer skeletal muscle fibers contracting and that should mean, obviously, less force. But on the other hand, if you recruit a greater number of motor units, then more skeletal muscle fibers contract and that gives you greater force of contraction. So the recruitment of motor units is based on the size of motor units within a muscle. The smallest motor units are the most sensitive and they're recruited first with subsequent stimulation of less sensitive motor units. So this allows us to have both fine motor control, such as when you pick up something small, 
uh, or to have very powerful force of contraction if you're lifting something heavy. So what effect does changing the frequency of the stimulus have on muscle contraction? Well, if you look at this first graph right here, A, this shows that with each muscle twitch, the stimulus is the same, the muscle is contracting and completely relaxing before the next stimulation. So the muscle tension produced with each twitch is the same. In the second image, we're going to look at a few things. First, we'll look at wave summation, which is the far left side of this graph. So we were looking at on the first one, each stimulus led to one muscle contraction. One stimulus, one contraction. That's a twitch, right? So the muscle contracts and relaxes completely. Well, what if the stimulation is coming so quickly that the muscle never gets to relax? Well, that results in something a little bit differently. So each stimulus after the first one is hitting that muscle before it gets to relax completely. So that rapidly re-stimulated muscle is going to display a summation of the contractile forces as each new wave is added to the previous wave. So these waves, remember, are showing force of contraction or muscle tension. So a stimulus hits and we have contraction. The muscle starts to relax. Whoops, there's another stimulus. Let's contract again. So it's going to contract a little more forcefully. And it starts to relax and then, oh, wait, there's another stimulus. We contract again with a little more force. So it's summing or adding together the force of contraction from each stimulus. That is called summation or wave summation because the contraction waves are added or summed together.